So, the new album that you've got going out is going to be produced by your prior producer, Larry Clyde. Mm -hmm. Last album, Indigo, was Kareem Riggins. That's right. Who also sat session with you yes. for most of the album. Did a lot of the drums. He did, yeah. Stuff, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so what's the biggest difference that you see bringing back, you know, uh, a new but yet old producer for you on this new one? And then what does that bring to the table for what we see coming out? For this album, we felt like Larry Klein would be the best guy because he's really into what would you call it organicness I guess like mm -hmm. just just the instruments and a lot of space and not too much going on not that there's anything wrong with a lot going on but he just is so great at like you know orchestras and stuff like that, all that kind of stuff setting up live instruments I think I feel like he's the best he kind of lets you do your thing right mm -hmm. there in the studio so mm -hmm. he just gets he captures the moment like as it's happening which is great so that's what we did and since it's a record kind of a throwback more straight ahead jazz record um he's great with jazz so i thought he's a good guy for this right, project right. yeah mean, you know coming from the uh -huh. visual background right yeah else, exactly right? this seems like a, a true and he's fit. A, you know he's a stamp plays bass and all that so i like the way he makes the, he made the record flow some jazz publications have called you jazz-ish. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you've also in the same breath been compared to the likes of like Diana Krall or Roberta Flack and all these other huge names, which is great. But what would you call yourself, or how would you define your style hmm. to those who are just coming on board and finding about Candace Springs now? <laughs> Man, that's tough. Um, it is. I, it's, the, it's, uh, the, it's the worst question to ask a musician <laughs> because you're like, oh, shit, I have to compare myself against whoever. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're good. Sorry. Um, I would. Oof, man. I, I'm me, but jazz and soul. I always tell people it's like jazz meets soul. Um, I'm really influenced by like Roberta Flack, and I'm really influenced by Ella Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. But I'm really influenced by Lauren Hill, and as well as Diana Krall, Billie Holiday, Roberta Flack. I said that earlier, right? but Roberta, I feel like I might relate to the most vocally in a lot of ways, Absolutely. and then. Um, she plays piano too, so right, it's like a, right. maybe a new one. And, he, and Prince even said that to me at one point. He's like, "You could be a Roberta, maybe of your lifetime." You got my next question, ahead of time, <laughs> which is always good. I mean, so okay, so it, the rumor is, is that Prince once said to you that your voice could bounce snow, oh, and, it, and and it's oh, I dude. know, it's, it's, oh. it's true. I mean, that's a really <laughs> what said, or at least people have published that. And then the other thing that's been said is that he also gave you the jacket off his back. Yes. Show. So, is there a story that you can tell us about Prince that hasn't been told yet? Or maybe you haven't <laughs> told? Because here's the thing, Discogs people love Prince. The collector's market is huge to Prince, yes. obviously, and, uh, you know, your, your relation to him is, is a great thing. I mean, I guess. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, that's well, definitely one of them. So, <laughs> that's, I, you know, we always love to hear the Prince stories because they're so fabled in that nature. Right, yeah. And as yeah, we, I have a lot as of we stories. keep growing, as, you, <laughs> as we go on, obviously there's, you know, you, there are less and less people that can tell them, so please, go ahead. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Like, people that have hung out with him would know that he liked movies. So, like, the first day I got there, he had his band, New Power of Generation Quartet, already rehearsing and stuff. My, my set for the show the next night, we're doing the Flurious Purple Rain anniversary in um, 2014. So anyway, they're, they're practicing. I went up there and we did uh, Meet Me in the Sky, who played that. And that, that was one of Prince's favorites. And Prince walked in, he had his cane. And he walks in, after we end the song, he he collapses on the ground, like all, oh, like he's on stage, <laughs> like stuff that he would do. We're just like, oh my goodness, this is Prince. So, super cool. But then right after that, he's like, let's go see a movie. So we all get in his, uh, like an expedition. Oh, no, it was like a beautiful Cadillac Escalade. And he had a yeah. most be cool driver named Kim. She took us to this theater in Chanhassen and um, he would kick everybody out of the theater and then we'd all go watch. <laughs> we would have like two employees, one to make popcorn and one to run the screen. So that was one and then I remember going to a club with him in um, downtown uh, Minnesota and we went to see Living Color, which is really cool. So he had this beautiful girl that would go out and and this big buff dude, his bodyguard, go into the restaurants or clubs and warn everybody that he's there. And so they would set up a spot from upstairs and block it off. And so I got to go there with him once. So that was like the last time I hung out with him. That was in 2016. That's good. I know. Yeah, and then we were actually working in the studio and I have a couple tracks that we never finished that we kind of started messing with. So maybe, maybe it'll be heard one day. Fingers crossed. So. 
<laughs> we'll that's, see. Yeah, yeah. That's, yep. that's stuff of legends. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see when we see it. Yeah. Yep. That's killer. All right. So, um, the big <laughs> question that we always have for Discogs users and fans is what are the albums that make you, um, make you the musician, make you the fan of the music that you play? Mm. And, you know, where is your starting point for getting into jazz or getting into soul? So, please show us what you got. <laughs> yeah, I went through. Um, one of my biggest starters is Nina Simone. Yes. Um, my dad had was playing her since I was eight years old. He okay. was playing all her stuff and told me about how amazing of a singer she was. And uh, you know, she played a lot of classical piano. I play classical piano, jazz, and she mix it up. She's super unique, and her voice is so unique, distinct. Like you know, it's her when she's singing. And uh, this is uh, Wild as the Wind. That's my personal favorite song she does. And uh, <laughs> Four Women is great too. And I was trying to find a put a spell on you. I love that song. So that's the song I attributed to her on my record coming out. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a, but yeah, I really relate to her in that way. Um, obviously, uh, let's see. Oof, I got Billie Holiday. And this is you. You have a cover of this on the new album as well. Yes. So I'm doing um, "Strange Fruit" for her and on her. You know that song's. I describe it as beautiful and ugly in one. The lyrics are extremely powerful, and the melody is just as powerful. So um, every time I perform it, it's you know it's people almost don't even know what to do. But can you imagine being in her shoes back then doing it? Uh, you know, it's like crazy. So I had to pay tribute to her at all. Let the younger generation be aware of, Absolutely. you know, what she's going through, and still stuff going on today. Um, Prince, of course, that's my boy right there. <laughs> and that's such a, I mean, Come on. It's an iconic album, it's an iconic song, yep. and, uh, and there's so much to it. That, you know, the 1999. Yeah, I like Absolutely. a. I'm a big car girl. I really like a little red Corvette. And I have right. a, a red Corvette <laughs> too. So you do? I do. Yeah. Right uh, it's a 14. I also okay. have a C3, a third uh, third generation. So okay. big car. Okay. Car night. He liked cars too. So me and Prince bonded on that okay. a little bit. He had some yeah. cool cars. Like, he had like a Benny Continental downstairs, and then he had a Plymouth Howler or some some other stuff. I was like, wow. Okay, Prince. <laughs> so um, there's another one, Duke Ellington. I took some classes in Nashville okay. called National Jazz Workshop, All right. and they taught me a bunch of. Duke Ellington songs, and Ella Fitzgerald would sing most of them because she just sings the melody so straight ahead. But she can also go riff and make the most brilliant, you know, ad libs. You can come, think of. <laughs> and uh, Charles Mingus is on this one too. Was, Money Jungle. Also a brilliant, jungle. yes. Absolutely. I mean, all these session players that have done stuff over years, I mean, now coming back into it, that's a, yeah, that's a huge entry level one for You better know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to do a tribute to Charles Mingus with the BBC Proms. Uh, a couple years ago in London, which is really cool. We were at the Royal Albert Hall, and uh, so that's cool. I had to relate and, and to this one. You had a massive orchestra for that one. Yes, yeah, the yeah. BBC Orchestra. So there you go. There you <laughs> go. Okay. crazy. So they're incredible. So you get chills when you're just standing there. I believe it. Yep. And then this one's for my my dad. My dad loves Stevie Wonder, and he's the reason I get into music. So and okay. if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have probably even known this was a career. And he was a big session musician, right? As well. Yes. He would just, he would do a lot of vocals, like uh, yep. standard vocal stuff, and bring you in. You know, to kind of be part of the, the process. He sure did. Recording stuff yep. back in the day. So that's, yeah, that's hugely impressive. I mean, you come from such a musical pedigree in Nashville. It's, it's amazing yes. to find that kind of thing that still exists nowadays. Yep, like here that's you right. You are so. headlining here more than tonight, and, you know, <laughs> we're stoked to have you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We well, well, appreciate you having us. No, so. This is cool. We are, we are here, and we are ready to hear it. See what you got. Yes. So, I mean, new album, <laughs> The Women Who Raised Me, is That's out right. March 27th. Yep. Perfect. You got it. 2020. Uh, 2020 Woo. through Blue Note Records. Yep. And we'll see it on vinyl. And yep. We'll see a bunch of other stuff coming too. All right. You Fantastic. got it. Right on. Well, thank you, Candace. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Cheers. This is really cool, man. All right. Really nice place. Catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.